Good morning, Google Plus. Uh, this is Legally Speaking. I'm Stephen Fuderall. I'm an attorney in Charleston, South Carolina, practicing in personal injury, criminal defense, and divorce law, just to keep it mixed up and interesting. And I am joined by my lovely co-host, Tina Willis, who is a personal injury attorney in Orlando, Florida, and together we are legally speaking. Good morning, Tina. How are you? How is how are things in the lovely land of Mickey? Oh, they're great down here. I'm I'm doing good this morning. Um, it's it's been way colder than I prefer, and every every but just about this time every year I start thinking that I need to move to Miami, and I I really I just. I can't stand even just like the three or four days of cold that we get. But other than that, I mean, it gets to uh, 70 in the day. And it, well, it, it's warm. Uh, look at me. I've got a sweater on today. And I'm me in Charleston, too. South Carolina. It's not quite as cold. Well, it's actually colder than where you are. But uh, we never see snow and that sort of thing. So. Oh, really? No, not really. Huh. Yeah, I mean, we never see snow. I think the last, I don't know, someone on Google Plus told me the last, it was Jeffrey Lapine told me the last recorded snow in Florida, and I don't remember when it was, but I was about eight years old or so. So, or at least in Orlando, maybe in uh, northern Florida there's more, but yeah. I don't, I don't do well with the cold, that's why I live in Florida. But gotcha. Anyway, so I'm super excited about our guest this morning. Um, Kimberly Bishop is a, is a Social Security Disability Attorney from North Carolina, and she's a ball of fun, we've already discovered, and she's a wealth <laughs> of information. <laughs> Uh, she has been practicing just exclusively uh, Social Security disability law since 2009, and uh, she focuses her practice in Raleigh, Durham, and Cary, North Carolina. So uh, she can help disability claimants in that area, and she's here to tell us a little bit more. Good morning, Kimberly. How are you doing? Good morning. How are both of you? I, We're doing great. No, no, no complaints here, and nothing you'd really want to hear anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. I could well, go on and on actually about my complaints, but yeah. we will just save that. that that's another so, show, Tina. Yeah, that's I know, show. I know. Yeah. It's like a therapy show. Well, I appreciate the description, the intro, and the ball of fun. That is awesome. <laughs> 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 I'm going to tell my husband that when I get home. Uh huh. Um, well, well thank you I both second very, that motion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you both very much for having me. It's a wonderful show. Well, well, thank you, thank you. So, uh, Tina, you want to? How about uh, if I turn it over to you to sort of uh, get into uh, grilling Kimberly about her practice areas? <laughs> well, I'm not uh, yeah. Uh, I, listen, <laughs> I, uh, disability, disability law. When we're doing this show, I, truth be told, I know very little about disability law and you start thinking I mean who would have thought that a bunch of lawyers like to talk right so today we're talking about disability law and on one hand it might seem like it's kind of a dry subject but on the other hand it's a serious subject in that this is something that folks face uh, oftentimes uh, I know that I have clients who ask me questions about disability law and I end up referring them to somebody who focuses in that area so for me personally I'm very interested to, to see what Kimberly has to say yeah me too I've actually handled a few of these cases um, but that you know I mean that, that my I have like a little what do they call it just a, you know like a shot glass worth of knowledge about social security disability so I did some research this morning but I still now I have like a shot glass plus a couple drops but um, but Kimberly tell us a little bit more about what social security disability even is uh, what what your practice area entails what it's like uh, you know, just you tell us what what do we need to know about what you do? Um, basically, people come to me when they are no longer able to work. Um, there's two different types of benefits that they may be eligible for. The first one is Social Security Disability Insurance Benefits (SSDI). This is based on the credits from the work that they've done in their life. Um, there's another type of benefit called SSI, which is Supplemental Security Income. This is for individuals who maybe don't have a strong work history or also for children. Um, the requirements for these two programs are slightly different, but the bottom line is that you have to be found disabled by the Social Security Administration in order to be eligible for either one of these programs. 
being found disabled by the Social Security Administration is difficult <laughs> um, to say the least. Um, it's also a very long process and unfortunately for a lot of these people you know when you're disabled you don't have any income coming in um, your household has lost an income you still have the same bills you had before and so these people are at a loss they were like you know oh my god what am I going to do now this is where social security disability comes in um, but the biggest problem with it is that you know it takes about two years to get on social security disability benefits so you go from you know losing one household income or either having zero household income to a two-year time frame of waiting for your disability benefits to, to come through so you know I deal with people on a daily basis who are probably going through the worst time of their lives you know they're sick they can't afford to go to the doctor they don't have any money coming in so pretty much what I do as a social security disability attorney is I carry their case through the social security disability process. I make sure that the DDS examiner at the initial and the reconsideration levels is doing everything that they're supposed to do. I want to keep this case on track. Um, there are several different levels that you may have to go through in order to have your social security disability case approved. Um, when you initially apply for social security disability, you're in North Carolina anyway, um, your case is sent to DDS, which is Disability Determination Services in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, DDS in North Carolina, with DDS comparable in every state, every state has a, a DDS. They may not be called DDS, but they have one. Um, DDS does not approve very many of the cases that they see, so people get denials. Um, and this is, you know, kind of where the preaching part of my practice comes in. You know, if you receive a denial for Social Security disability, you have to appeal the denial. I cannot tell you how many people I meet who received a denial, they throw up their hands, and then six months later they realize they still can't work. So then they have to go back, start all over again, instead of just appealing and keep going. Um, Wait, can I interrupt you for a yes. second? I'm just wondering, one of the problems that, that I saw very early on, it seemed to me, just with the practice area in general, was um, people who cannot work, often, uh, you know, then, okay, they can't work, that means they don't have any income. That also means they don't have employer insurance. Now, they may have be lucky enough to have a spouse who uh, is providing insurance, uh, but if they can't, if they, bottom line is they don't have insurance, they can't get a doctor, which means that they have difficulty proving that they're disabled because, you know, I talked with a, quite a few disability attorneys when I was handling um, these cases and the bottom line is you've got to prove the disability, similar to a personal injury case, you've got to prove the disability with medical records. You know, you, you can't just say, you know, I'm, I'm in terrible pain and I believe the person. <laughs> I believe you. I totally believe you. But it's a circular problem. It, 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 you know, and so another problem, I actually, a uh, weird situation, but I was a, a manager for a nonprofit clinic for the poor here. I actually volunteered there for a number of years and became a manager. And we saw a lot of these, uh, the claims come through, and the doctors would fill out the long form. Uh, but we, we developed a policy that we would no longer do that. Uh, for a variety of reasons, it wasn't my decision, uh, but you know that uh, even further it seemed. I mean, that's it was one of the biggest in Central Florida, and I know that similar clinics were doing the same thing. So people would even turn to these clinics, and I just don't know how. It seems to me ridiculous that we require. I don't. I don't know how do you get around that. Is basically, I mean, what do you do to solve that problem? Well, this problem is especially relevant in North Carolina because North Carolina is one of the states that did not take the federal Medicaid money. So we have clients, my clients make too little money in order to qualify for the subsidies for the Affordable Care Act. Right. And because North Carolina did not expand their Medicaid, these people aren't getting Medicaid. So one, they, they can't get health insurance through the ACA and they're not eligible for Medicaid under the federal expansion. So right. um, the only way I am able to get people on health insurance or a type of health insurance 
is having them apply for Medicaid for the disabled. Um, nine times out of ten, they receive a denial, an initial denial for the Medicaid. Then I have them appeal that denial, a hearing is scheduled, and then I send all evidence, I do briefs, I do whatever I have to do to try to get that Medicaid hearing officer to allow my client to go on Medicaid. And this is, this is not an easy process. Sometimes I go round and round um, with the Medicaid, the people at Medicaid, um, because, you know, a lot of people are out of work. Um, people are not eligible for Medicaid under the federal expansion. So this one particular program, the Medicaid for the Disabled, a lot of people are running to it. Um, having them apply for Medicaid is step number one. Um, step number two is I keep a running list of all the counties that I serve. Uh, where people can receive free or low-cost medical treatment. Um, the good thing about low-cost medical treatment is if you don't have any money, <laughs> I mean, they're on a sliding scale, you know, it, that really helps clients. I have people go to the health department, um, you know, crisis units, anything that they can do to get any kind of medical treatment. And then at the end of the day, if none of that works and my clients are in a lot of pain, you know, they end up going to the emergency room, you know, and you're talking about the cost of health care, you know, when you have someone that you could just give Medicaid to and they would just need medications or an x-ray or, or, you know, this might cost $100. Instead, at the end of the day, they end up going to the emergency room, which costs thousands of dollars but what is what is this person to do when they're in pain and they they just don't have the money to go to a regular doctor who's not going to see them sure I uh, sorry uh, Stephen go ahead no no uh, if there's uh, unless you've got a follow-up to that uh, Kimberly I was going to tell you we're starting to get some questions from the audience here <laughs> that I wanted to throw up on the screen for you um, okay. we've got, uh, I'm going to, let me throw up here one from Jeffrey Lapine, and it's cut off, but there are two questions here. The first question is, what do you think about the strict fee restrictions regarding attorneys representing claimants? Do you think there's a problem? Is the fee restrictions really prevent people from getting a lawyer, as there is no way for the lawyer to get paid, for example, in overpayment cases? And Kimberly, for the benefit of our audience, can you kind of, for the non-lawyers out there, can you explain what it is that, that Jeffrey is asking about, the uh, okay. strict fee restrictions? Well, um, in this particular case, well, let me go back. Um, in the Social Security disability world, um, the attorney only gets paid out of the client's back pay. So I have to win your case and you have to receive back pay in order for me to get paid. The client does not pay me directly. The Social Security Administration pays me. There is a 25% or $6,000 maximum. So if my client gets $24,000, I get $6,000. If my client gets $5,000, I get $1,200. That math may not be right, but it comes out to, <laughs> it comes out to 25%. Yeah. This is Thanks. why we became lawyers, right? Because uh, we're terrible. Yes, because we're bad yes, at math. I, that was my worst um, subject, yeah. <laughs> so what he's speaking about is, say... I win your case and you go on Social Security Disability Benefits. Let's say a little bit down the road, you decide you want to go back to work. Well, or you don't necessarily have to go back to work. Something could happen and the Social Security Administration could determine that they have overpaid you. So let's say the Social Security Administration says they've overpaid you $25,000. See, at this point, it's very, very difficult to get an attorney to represent you because there's no back pay. Because Social Security disability attorneys are paid out of the back pay money, there's nothing for them to get. So at this point, if you want to be represented, you either one, have to go to legal aid, or two, you have to pay the attorney up front. Um, that really hurts a lot of people because overpayment issues are complex. Um, the attor an attorney really needs to look at what the Social Security Administration is saying, how they calculated this this overpayment, and it's really hard to get an attorney because you don't have any money to pay one, and there's not any money to be attained. Usually, cases like this, I take on a couple of them, maybe more than a couple a year, just as kind of pro bono work. 
Um, oh, because you're so nice. <laughs> this yeah. is why we like Give having you on. Yes, yay, pro bono. Well, yeah. I mean, it's really actually the cases sound they are complicated, but once an attorney gets involved and you file a waiver and you fight a little bit, it's usually okay. But the average person doesn't know what to do or how to do it for themselves, or you know, so try to help people if you can. Okay. I, I uh, actually have a question. Um, I, I was just wondering in general when we we were planning this show, um, you know, we've had this recession going on for a few years now and I know there have been some budget cuts related to Social Security and I'm just I was just kind of wondering how that's affected your practice. I mean I would guess claims have risen while money is going down and so has that affected you as an attorney or your clients? Oh yes. The, the issue is the claims have risen, um, but the number of people working at the Social Security Administration has went down. Mm -hmm. So we have probably, it takes about 13 months here to have a hearing scheduled. So from the time you request the hearing to the time the hearing is scheduled, it's, it's taking over a year, whereas maybe three or four years ago it was taking nine months, ten months, and you know, for the people who don't practice this, you're saying, oh, that's only three or four more months. But when you don't have any money, three or four more months is is a lifetime. Yeah, that's even twelve or thirteen months yeah, is a lifetime. I mean, I just don't I still don't understand how these people get through not only with medical treatment, but just with living. If you I mean if you if you've got someone who absolutely let's just I mean the worst case disability, they absolutely cannot work. And there is no money, and, and I mean, to me, the most tragic is no money and no medical insurance. In many cases, then they can't prove their case, and maybe can't even get approved for disability. I mean, yeah, you it, could have someone with the most severe disability ever yeah. cannot cannot get. It does not matter, and and they do have their own doctor, but my experience was forget about it with their own. It's like, it's like a vicious circle of impo yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, impoverishment there. It's it's. it's and I mean, my first two questions when I meet people, because I meet every one of my clients, um, my first two questions are, are you getting food stamps? If, if you're not, why not? If, are you getting Medicaid? If not, you need to apply for it. Have you went to social services? Um, have, they, have you talked to them about helping you pay your utility bills? And I mean, I know that there are, wow. people, I know that there are people out here you know, that have these opinions about life and people on disability, blah, 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 but I live in the real world where I deal with people who are having serious financial and physical problems. These people need help. So I'm doing whatever I can do to help them through this time frame. You know, food stamps, Medicaid, a lot of my clients live in the shelter. So wow, yeah. and I mean the thing that kills me is that the people who kind of criticize these types of programs, and frankly, it it, it sort of applies to injury clients as well. I think to a certain extent, do not understand the level of proof that is needed. I mean, you do not just walk in and say, you know what, I got a lawyer. Here I am. Give me a check. I mean, it just <laughs> doesn't work that way. You must have a doctor. In fact, I won't even you know I. I will still take these cases for just people who I basically know and feel some connection to and, and want to help them, but the, the reality is that I will not do it unless you have the ability to get to a doctor. I mean, you do, you're you more involved, but I'm just saying that you, you must have a doctor with records filling out long forms. In fact, sometimes you can even have a doctor. They can't just say, oh, you know, whatever disorder. They, no, they've got to answer the long questionnaire about how the disability affects your life, blah, blah, blah. People don't understand. It's like, you know, if there's fraud going on, I want to know who the heck is pulling it off because well, I'm not the lawyer who can do that. Well, I'm no. sure a lot of people have heard about the firefighters um, in New York, the, the fraud that's supposed to be going on. Um, and the former commissioner of Social Security, Michael Astru, um, he recently, well, maybe not so recently, he had testified before the Ways and Means Committee, and the amount of fraud in Social Security disability is so small. It's like less than 1% of the claims. Um, and, and this actually, maybe to the layperson, this doesn't make sense, but to the practitioner, this makes perfect sense. So you have someone 
who's dead broke, who can't afford to go to the doctor, um, why would this person sit around and wait for two years to get on Social Security disability benefits? Sure. Uh, uh, where's, uh, where's the incentive to be a malingerer there under those circumstances? Of well, course. you know, we're not, we're, not talking about, we're not talking about a lot of money here. You know, right. I, just this, a few hundred I mean, dollars. And not only that, but I mean, not even if there were the incentive, you absolutely, you know, it isn't just the person. I mean, I don't know. I, I, it, to me, that is just, you know, the fact that you must have a doctor who must fill it out. I mean, it's like, if they, they, I don't even know how 1% of fraud would get through because, <laughs> you know, unless you got the judge in on it, you know, you got a judge there who's going to be looking at records. But I mean, maybe right. they're, you know, so anyway. All right, ladies, I'm going to jump in here so we can get to some of our audience's <laughs> questions if we can do do that okay all right and uh, here's another one we have this is from Lori Heffernan and she writes I'm disabled and I do get help my question would be when I got hurt at work March 21st of 2005 I never got any money while I was out of work then I found out I couldn't go back to work because of my injury they called me at home and fired me can you help me with this um, do you have any words of wisdom here or direction for Lori Kim this actually sounds like an employment law issue um, mm -hmm. because her first sentence is that she she is disabled and she is receiving help. So I believe from that sentence she's already probably on Social Security disability benefits. So it sounds like she really needs to talk to an employment lawyer about that gap of time when she was out of work and then how they you know terminated her employment. And that's honestly beyond my scope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We have another question. I'm going to toss this up in a self-serving manner. This is from my lovely <laughs> wife. My lovely wife, oh, okay. Kelsey Futerall. Okay. And she asked my hello, father. Hello, wifey. Uh, yeah, everybody say Hi. hello to Kelsey. Hi, Kelsey. She's, all right. Uh, my wife asked, and this is regarding my father-in-law. Uh, I couldn't ask for better in-laws as a, as a side note. He's not watching, and I'm saying that anyway, right? Oh, wow. um, okay. But your wife but is. your wife is, yes. She's watching, so... <laughs> All right, so here's what, uh, here's what uh, she asks. My father has a rare nerve degeneration disease and has been faced with choosing between employer short-term disability and Social Security disability and retirement. How does he choose when to opt out for disability through Social Security versus disability through his employer? Are they mutually exclusive? Okay, um, this is kind of a complicated answer I'm going to give. Um, let me go back to the retirement versus the disability. Um, I don't know the particulars of your father-in-law's case, but I can tell you that in general it's better to go on Social Security disability than it is to take early retirement. And the reason is if you draw early retirement your benefits are going to be reduced over the rest of your life and it can be an up to a 30% reduction. But if you can be found disabled and get on Social Security disability benefits, you will get your full retirement amount early. You'll also be eligible for Medicare after being on Social Security disability for two years. So if we're talking about Social Security disability versus retire early retirement benefits, um, usually Social Security disability wins out in that little battle. Now as far as short-term disability is concerned and Social Security disability, um, a lot of the short-term disability, the issues with that revolve around what your insurance, insurance carrier says um, about your disability policy. I have had clients that have been on short-term disability and then get on um, Social Security disability, but that rarely happens. What usually happens is someone leaves their job on short-term disability, then they apply for Social Security disability, um, and it takes two years to get there, so during that time their long-term disability benefits kick in. Usually most long-term disability insurance carriers have a caveat or a disclaimer in their contract saying that if you are awarded short, excuse me, if you are awarded Social Security disability benefits, you're going to re
reimburse them for the long-term disability payments that they made to you. That could also be the case with the short-term disability policy. So it really depends on what his short-term disability policy says. But I can say as a final note, um, apply for Social Security disability benefits as soon as possible for him if he's going to be out of work. And this is why you don't know how long he's going to be out of work. What I'm describing is a process that can take two years. So it's good. The best thing to do is to go ahead and get your application in and get the ball rolling. Okay. Um, uh, two quick things here. And, and Kim, thanks for answering those uh, questions. About your father-in-law. And, and about my father-in-law. You know, send me a bill after the show is over with, right? Uh, two things. One, a program note. I want to apologize that the camera seeps, uh, seems to be flipping back and forward. You know, it's wonderful that we can do these hangouts on air, but I'm sitting here not touching a single thing, and I'm watching it ping-pong back and forth. So oh, for the viewing really audience, uh, sorry about that. I'm, I'm truly not not a narcissist. Okay, so I want to I want to throw up another question here, Tina uh, and and Kim. This is from uh, a fellow lawyer, Daniel Capetta, and he writes uh, that I've heard some nightmare stories in the past of those who are truly disabled sometimes being rejected for benefits. Can you give us the most extreme case from your own practice? Of course, not giving away any attorney-client information, uh, but can you give us a, a case from your own practice where someone you felt was truly disabled was was denied benefits by the government. I actually can give you several. <laughs> um, probably the saddest, um, the saddest ones are the ones that die. Um, I've had some, I've had some clients pass away um, during this process, and uh, you don't, you don't forget them. <laughs> so probably. Uh, as, other than the clients that pass away, which I really don't want to um, speak about, um, I have clients that are blind. Um, I have clients that have diabetes so bad they have their uh, toes amputated. Um, we start with the toe, we go to the ankle, we end up at the knee. Um, these people get denied by Social Security. Um, and, and it's not, and I can't sit here and say that it's all Social Security's fault because we're talking about a two-year period. So maybe at the initial or the reconsideration level, you know, maybe the medical records that they have are not screaming disability. But in between the reconsideration level and the hearing level, things change because we're talking about over a year. I mean, some people really plummet during this time. So by the time we get to the hearing, it is painfully clear that this person is disabled. Um, I mean, I've, I've had some horror stories. I've went home furious. I've thrown things in my office. Um, but, you know, I'm a bulldog. You know, if, if I decide that this person is disabled, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a dreamer. <laughs> you know, if this person is disabled to me, they're disabled, and I'm going to keep working until they get on disability benefits because they need to be on disability benefits because there's no way that this person can work. So that's good it. for you, rah rah. Hey, yes, man, that's what I yes, about. yes. We're fighters. You yeah. Understand that we go through a lot to actually try to prove. We uh, really do. Yeah, to try to prove any case that we're working on. I mean, if you're if you're a caring attorney, you just you put your heart and soul and in, into digging into the facts and the, in my case, the law. You, you yours is always the same law, so that helps. But uh, I I have a, I wanted to get into. Um, Kind of Google Plus. What's been going on with your with your with your experience on Google Plus and social media? If you're active elsewhere, um, I'm actually. I feel like I'm active everywhere. Um. <laughs> I yeah, listen. You were when I started getting active in September. I have to say. Kimberly was one of those that I first saw on there in the lawyer community, and okay. she she followed me. I followed her back. She plus shared and commented. So, uh, uh, as a shout out for those of, uh, who are watching <laughs> the show, if you haven't added Kimberly mm -hmm. to your circles, you really should. Of course, you should add Tina and myself. But <laughs> Kimberly's <laughs> wonderful to follow on Google Plus. Anyway, I'm sorry. A little little plug for for Kim. Well, um, I am on uh, Google Plus, Twitter, Facebook, Manta, LinkedIn, and oh, man, other one I've never even heard of. Manta? So, 
Uh, oh my gosh. A lot of people, it's not really social. Um, oh, okay. Because a lot of people don't use it. But okay. I do. Oh, uh, well, I, here, listen, interesting program note. Before we started this show, I met with a client early this morning. I always ask how they found us if it wasn't a, a referral. And guess what? Found me on Manta as well. Are you uh, serious? And it took her, yeah, I swear I'm serious? not making this up. And, <laughs> and Kim, I was like you. I'm going to have to go back and look and see what Manta is because I didn't even know I was on it. So, anyway. Uh -huh. Okay. But of all the of all the social um, places I'm on, I like Google Plus the best. Um, actually, I learn the most on Google Plus um, because you know I only practice social security disability law, so it, my I wouldn't say my knowledge is limited. Well, it is. My knowledge is limited as far as other other practice areas, and it's always interesting because you know I'm a nerd <laughs> like most of us. Be quiet. I'm getting my game off. Criminal law. I'm, I'm yeah. like, I miss, I miss my calling as a criminal attorney. I've been getting so into these I'm, the criminal I'm, posts lately. Oh, I'm like, listen, I want to fight Tina, for these guys. I'm, I'm trying to pump Tina up to start doing criminal law. You are missing out. Let me I tell you, this is why I do All it. these excessive force cases, but anyway, well, but, I'm not no. talking about the cases. I'm talking about the clients. It's fascinating well, stuff. Well, anyway. What's really interesting is that you know it, it appears that we're going towards the legalization of marijuana, and because a lot of states are heading that way, and at the same time, you know we have the DUI issue oh, you know, yeah. with but, marijuana, you know, there's, and, think, there's, and they're legalizing recreational marijuana, which some guy got into a debate with me on Google Plus about how that absolutely, I mean, de, I mean a long debate. <laughs> <laughs> on Google Plus, and it, 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 he was citing studies and everything about um, the fact that that doesn't interfere with your driving. That you can just be completely <laughs> stoned, wait, wait, no, totally sorry. and I'm completely sorry. gone. Really? I mean, really? So you're driving study with after a... study. I was yeah. having the most intensive debate, and and you know it, it was just it was crazy. And finally, I had to say, well, look, he said he said apparently the studies are inconclusive. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. Well, listen. I don't want to share. Inclusive. I don't want to share the road with that guy while he's just sort of I, eating from a bag of Doritos, kicked back as far as he can go. Like, yeah. Some other guy came on and said, "Look, for those of us who've been using pot for a long time, <laughs> we're we're fine." But you not not think about not the me. Nope. The newbies don't know how to use pot and drive. So for those people, anyway. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, no, no offense to this guy, but I mean, this was for real. But so yeah. Well, yeah. People well, as a side passionate. note, there's a bad idea to post all that stuff on Google Plus for your next arrest. But yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 But but, the, but it's nice to see like new developments in the law that I may ne not necessarily interact with on a frequent basis. I mean, but I remember this stuff from school. Um, so, and it, it's nice, especially the constitutional law issues. Um, when I was in school, that was my favorite subject. Um, oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh. I am really a nerd. <laughs> so let's, right. oh, let's just I put it out to, there. Folks, I have to put up one that is really not a, a, a question as much as it is a comment from Jason Dunkel saying, <laughs> Criminal lawyers are the best, no bias here either. And I, <laughs> right. but Kim, before you even respond to that, I'm going to say, Jason, you are nowhere near as attractive as Kimberly Bishop is, so I, I can't agree with you on that at all. Um, okay? Jason, so, Jason, is, um, Jason Dunkel is actually a really great um, guy on Google Plus to follow. Um, his comments are really, really great, and he does a lot of sharing. And I mean, that's probably my only complaint about Google Plus. You know, I try to share a lot of people's stuff over and over. You know, if it's good, I want to share it. I want other people to see it. And I mean, it may just be me because I practice social security disability. And honestly, that's probably not the most exciting, you know, area of law. But sometimes I feel like I share a lot and I don't really get a lot of shares in return. But once again, it could be because social security disability is not the most dramatic action packed um, oh, area of well, love. You know, what I found, and here's the suggestion, is is that if you, you know, we want to focus on our practice areas, but if you, uh, for example, share a personal injury in particular, uh, 
or maybe even a criminal link somehow, you can link it to Social Security Disability by saying, you know, this person might also be entitled to Social Security. So you can kind of yeah. meld two practice areas any time you're doing a post and that way kind of, uh, because, you know, I felt the same way. I mean, not everyone wants to talk about injury law all day, but, you know, I can <laughs> get into the criminal guys and say, hey, you know, this also might lead to a civil suit. Yes. Um, so, you know, maybe, I mean, it's tough, you know, because well, I... Well, that's a great suggestion. I mean, no, I mean, you know, anyway, just an idea, but we're all struggling with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, ladies, now uh, we're like to, we're going to jump into a segment that we like to call cross-examination. Now it's personal. So, Kim, <laughs> if you've seen the yeah. show, you know I'm going to swear you in here because I'm a notary. I don't know if that works from South Carolina, North Carolina, but, you know. We it's didn't research that ahead of time. Uh, uh, will you raise your right hand? Can I see some ID to confirm you're actually Kimberly Bishop? No. All right. All right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> no. No. Okay. No, All right. No, not. Again, spoken like a lawyer. All right. Uh, let me see that hand. Okay. Okay. I'll okay. Put that hand up. Yes. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I didn't detect any hesitation there. Did you? Okay. No. no. All right. Uh, Tina, go ahead. Hit her. What What do you have? Ah, uh, my first one is. So you think you can dance? Uh, um, I saw that dancing is one of your hobbies on your website, so I was just wondering, you know, like, how do I get into this, or what do you, what kind of dancing do you do? How, how, I mean, white girls can't dance or something. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> um, actually, I um, take ballroom dancing classes. Oh, um, really? Nice. Yes. Nice. Um, and I am also a TCM, a Turner Classic Movie buff. I'm a big like Fred Astaire type person. <laughs> so, I, you're not. You're not getting embarrassed to answer this, are you? No, I, no. Um, I think that's great. Telling the whole world that I ballroom dance. <laughs> it's it's okay. <laughs> I think that's um, lovely. That is lovely. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, no, not embarrassing for you. Now we get to make fun of your husband, and you'll need to give me his Google Plus address there so we can pick on him for ballroom dance. Well, my husband doesn't. He doesn't go with me. We ah. practice at home. Ah. Him and I practice at home, and like when we go, you know, on vacation or on a cruise or out of the country or whatever, then you know we do. It. I mean, we don't go local places and do it. Like when we go out to local places, we we dance like normal people. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, if you start busting a move by ballroom dancing somewhere <laughs> at a club or bar, club, that might oh, be yeah. awkward. I, that'd be attention getting, no doubt, no yeah, doubt. So, uh, yeah. All right, so here's my question for you. We this is. You're going to set up a fantasy dinner, and you're going to pick three people for this fantasy dinner, excluding myself and Tina Willis, because <laughs> you gotta, we're, we're already doing this. Who would it be, those three people, and why? Oh, gosh. Um, my husband, um, my father, and, gosh, I, I, hold on, I'm thinking. <laughs> Probably Gandhi would be the last one. <laughs> Gandhi would be a good one. Gandhi <laughs> yes. would be on my uh, my list too. So. Um, That's my a hard question. Yeah, th my husband because he's always there. Why would he be there in my fantasy? <laughs> well, what's for dinner, Kim? What's for <laughs> yeah. dinner? Yes. Um, my father because he passed away when I was in law school, um. and I would give anything to hear him fuss one more time, uh, which he would. He'd fuss through the whole dinner so about something. <laughs> and Gandhi for obvious reasons. Oh, uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Good okay. answer. Good answer. Did you say, right. did you, oh, I didn't, I didn't hear the whole question, but, well, my question is a little bit more fun. I want to know about either your best vacation ever or your upcoming vacation plan, your dream, you, you know, one you want to take. Um, Paris is my dream. Um, we have not been there yet. Um, we've been a lot of places. I just haven't, I just, ha I've been so busy. I just, I haven't even had time to plan or anything like that. Um, but Paris, yeah, that would, that, a lot of people dream that, so that's not, you know. My husband and I found the same thing. We, we just don't take time to plan vacations, and then suddenly we realized, you know, so many years of Past, especially when you're, you know, you're self-employed, you just get, you, you, you're so into your grind, yes. and 
we finally just decided one night, you know, okay, uh, we are scheduling the flight right now. We'll figure out the hotel yes. and stuff later. Yep, you uh, really have to, have to make time. You have to. You have to. You really have to. I can't remember. I, I don't know about y'all, but I end up not taking two weeks off because I, you know, I'm self-employed, etc. Yes. And and to take two weeks off as relaxing as that is. On the flight back in, I did it one time. You can watch my anxiousness level rise as I got closer to South hey, Carolina. Can, I've got. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Tina. Wait, uh, you, you might be doing the same thing, but can I uh, can I show this real quick? Yes, I'm so that excited. was going to be my hey, next question. Nicholas that was going to be my next question. <laughs> yes. Am I not supposed to be enjoying this as much as I am since I'm not a lawyer? That is our big. That is our big fear. Yep, 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 <laughs> sorry. Constant thing is stays, you know, in the back of my head and, and consumes many of my thoughts. So that we're going to bore the <laughs> living bejesus out yes. of you in every episode. So Kim, <laughs> that was my next uh, question on, on cross-examination. Should he not be enjoying this as much as he is? He should be. He should yes. be. We're, you know, I mean, this is this is one thing. We're not only lawyers. I mean, we're people. <laughs> you right. Know, we have a sense of humor, and we have feelings, and we're actually just like everybody else, contrary to what people tell you. We're warm and fuzzy sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But that's good. Uh, I'm glad for you, Don't Nicholas. tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I know. I, know. Yeah. I think one of the things that law school does to change you and just practicing law, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the bad thing, I guess, is, mm -hmm. is that I tend to, I don't really think Tina, anymore. Like, yes? I apologize. We can't oh. see you because you've got your question <laughs> oh. up. I, you know, okay, this yes, is a learning no, thank, curve. Thank you. We want to see you Learning curve. But, right, um, but yeah, uh, one of the things is that instead of thinking, I don't really have a moral code any, <laughs> anymore. I just oh, have that, a legal, did you just say that I, out I loud? No a, moral. I just have a legal code. I mean, okay. and I, but I think that, that I do, I think I do have a moral code. I mean, obviously, but, yeah. but uh, I just, just think of things very often in terms of whether it's it's I would have to comply with a rule or not and my client would comply with a rule or not if there's a law that governs what they would do how they would you know how that law would affect them or not and yeah. so you know that but but other than that yeah we're normal people I mean that, that's probably <laughs> abnormal but yeah, um, yeah all right so. so that then takes us <laughs> speaking of being normal people and lawyers <laughs> my favorite question here on cross-examination is what is your most embarrassing moment as a lawyer and that could be in the courtroom in your office or otherwise go ahead dish we want to know there have been so many <laughs> just... all right you can only pick one you can only pick one um oh gosh I am notorious for I really get into my hearings so I will say whatever I feel is appropriate at that moment based on my client's testimony, based on the, the fluid of the hearing pretty much. So um, one day I had a guy and he, I don't know, he was in his 60s and um, the whole hearing was hilarious. I mean my client just, he made all types of, he was just a hilarious person and my closing argument to the judge was your Honor, my client is old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's the judge. Yeah. Well, the judge um, looked at me for about five seconds and, you know, he said, okay, counsel, you know, I'll take that into consideration. He was laughing, you know. And then we go off the hearing and myself and my client and the judge are sitting there and um, the judge says, counsel, do you know that your client and I are the same age? <laughs> oh no! Uh, did you give him oh, your card? Did you smile like your disability or anything? No, he yeah. said no, oh, and I and I said, gosh. I said, Your Honor, <laughs> I said, Your Honor, it's hilarious. different. It's different. My client doesn't read, so that was the distinguishing factor between the judge and my client. Obviously, I won that case. <laughs> um, because I wouldn't be telling the story if I had <laughs> lost it, but. I mean, I don't know. Just just going with the flow. Sometimes in hindsight, you look back and you're like, "Oh my God, I can't believe I said that." <laughs> I but it, it seems, but it seems to work. I mean, if 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 it we're going, you know, if, if that's the momentum of the hearing, you have to go with it. I mean, I don't think you can just be so rigid and uptight that you can't let your human side out. 
especially in my practice, I'm a social security disability attorney. You know, emotions play a large part in into what I do. So well, that was embarrassing. You know, I gotta I gotta throw something in the here, and this is why I ask those questions because obviously some of what uh, we're talking about here on the show serious stuff, whether it's disabilities, criminal, personal injury, etc. And I don't know about y'all, but I, I think we'd probably all agree that you do this long enough if you don't develop some sort of sense of humor and I don't mean poking fun at the clients necessarily or not being empathetic but you can't do what we do day in day out and and get so emotionally overwrought because it can be pretty draining I'm not complaining right. about it I'm just saying that I think it's good to have a sense of humor about these things and Kim and and also Tina I love seeing that side of both of you I really do oh thank you yeah. well I think Bingo. I think it's the trick, the first rule of the day is being able to laugh at yourself. Um, <laughs> I do yeah. that every, trust me, I do that every day. I'm here for comedy. No, I meet a lot of people, lawyers and judges, that can't laugh at themselves. You know, you're going to make mistakes. And I'm not talking about malpractice mistakes. I'm, I'm saying you're going to drop something or you're going to forget something or you're going to mispronounce a word. You know, you're going to make mistakes. You can't take yourself so seriously that you make yourself unhappy because that reflects in your practice it reflects in your personal life and I mean I don't I don't want to have a sad I don't want my lawyers to come here and see me and they're like God she should be on disability uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, well, man. I, I did have somebody Tina I had somebody who uh, private messaged me about what my most embarrassing moment is we've got a few minutes here but I don't want to take away from Kim's thunder so one day no. Tina remind me that I've got to share my most embarrassing gotcha. courtroom moment it's a doozy and I'll oh, put it no. out there for posterity. You can go ahead. So. You can go ahead. Okay. Oh, you, do you yeah. want to know? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm going to know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So. Although I gotta say this first, I think yes. Kimberly right now has got a running lead on the most embarrassing moment. I mean, that was hilarious. I mean, no, right. no offense. I mean, Kimberly. I mean, I think it's great. I'm glad you won that case. But saying that the, the someone's old and then the judge being the same age is right now for me <laughs> taking the prize. All right. Well, this but, is not a contest, but if it were Kim. <laughs> Hey, uh, go ahead and, uh, if, hey uh, to Jeffrey Lapine, everything on Google Plus is a contest. So uh, oh, let's, 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 here we go. So <laughs> I want, true, I want everybody. <laughs> Uh, if y'all uh, y'all listening out in the audience and commenting, I want to see bets made. Even though that's not legal, we're not going to collect on it. On who's going to have the most embarrassing? You've heard Kim's. Now here comes mine. All right. All right. So this is me as a young trial lawyer, my first time trying a case for personal injury. Okay. And I'm in a courtroom, and the courtroom has wires running all over it. Uh, you know, wires for microphones, wires for this, this, that, and the other by the counsel table. And this is old school before things went digital. So I am dealing with photographs, and I am going to approach from the counsel table to the witness box to show the witness some photographs. Now, to set this up in between the witness box and the jury box is an easel with a big board on it, okay? <laughs> So as I start to <laughs> as I start to approach the witness box, I've got all of these glossy photographs in my hand. My foot catches on the microphone cord. I stumble and I toss all of the photographs out of my hand. And like a deck of cards, they go shooting all the way up to the witness box. All right, so what do you do? I'm not going to stop the flow. I'm going to keep asking the witness <laughs> questions as I'm bending over, picking up, bending over, picking up, as I get closer and closer and closer to the witness. Bending over, picking up, and I finally get to the witness box. I bend over and pick up the last set of photographs, lean for or lean up, smack my head on the <laughs> on the bottom of the easel and knock the whole apparatus into the four person's lap and the other jurors oh, sitting on that awesome. side of the box. That's awesome. So that, 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 that's that is, I have more, but that one yeah. is oh, one man. of my best. Oh, and, and by the way, it was I mean, a terrible case. I won it, and I think <laughs> largely because the jurors felt so sorry for the young lawyer. Hey, there so is that empathy factor, yeah. Yes, I, I, I and of course the judge is up there just sort of, uh, you know, rolling his eyes. What's going to happen next? Oh, yes. You know, what matters so, is you oh, won. Oh, oh, but the judge asked me if I was 
if I hurt myself because when I whacked the board, <laughs> I whacked it pretty hard. I looked at the judge and then the jurors and I said, nothing but my pride, Your Honor. Nothing oh, but my pride. Did they laugh at that? So. No, that oh, was man. good. That was a good comeback. Instead yeah. of saying, oh, man. Instead of saying yes and looking down, you were like, Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, stuff it, it, happens. Can we know? take a brief recess? I think I have a concussion. So anyway, well, and you that's know what my we're moment. Gonna, what we're going to be able to add to this list eventually is our most embarrassing moments on Google Plus. So, but we haven't gotten there yet, thankfully. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Thanks. So, <laughs> there's there's more where that came from. All right, so, Tina I, uh, and Kim. I guess we're getting close to the end of the show here. Um, uh, before we get to that, Tina, I, I made a gaffe because this is live. I forgot to lead off the show by thanking our sponsor, so I'd like to do that now. Our sponsor is Rocket Matter, which is the leading cloud-based solution for law practice management for small to mid-sized firms. I don't know what the rest of you lawyers out there use. Of course, non-lawyers, y'all could care less. But for lawyers, I got to tell you, Rocket Matter is a wonderful program, ties in with iPads, iPhones, billing, and so on. So if you're looking to make a change in the coming future, regarding your law practice management solution, I highly recommend Rocket Matter. You can visit rocketmatter.com for more information regarding their services. And as a side note, uh, the wonderful graphics team over at Rocket Matter has sent us some updated graphics, yay. So we're going to have a little change to our logo and so on. So thank you, uh, folks at Rocket Matter. Anyway, Tina, let me turn this back over to you to, to say goodbye. Well, it's been great. It's always great here to, to get to connect with lawyers and hopefully uh, have a feeling that we're getting to know each other a little bit better. We hope to have uh, more lawyers on the show. We have some exciting shows planned. That's something that I've been uh, really taking to heart in terms of thinking about what might interest non-lawyers and lawyers that we're coming together uh, topics that are either very interesting in the news or, or, or relevant. We, we have an exciting copyright show planned, which I hope everyone will share. Um, uh, several copyright attorneys to talk about issues with online posting and blogging. Um, and then we have a, an exciting roundtable discussion uh, coming up, uh, the topic to be disclosed later. But we're planning, <laughs> we're planning some of those. Yeah, that's top <laughs> secret. But um, we're planning several shows of that nature and also very excited to have Christine DeGraff who is a social media superstar. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine anyone watching doesn't know uh, this wonderful woman. Uh, and she she's uh, taught me a lot since I've been on Google+, Plus, so we're excited to hear from her. But uh, just in terms of wrapping up, Kimberly, we're so thankful that you came on the show. Uh, again, you practice Social Security Disability in Raleigh, uh, in, in um, let's see, Durham, uh, and Cary, North Carolina. So we're hoping people will circle you up and, and maybe find you by way of this YouTube video, which, uh, by the way, I optimize for, for our, uh, to mention your practice area and, and name and everything. So, so we are just so thankful and, and just glad to get to know you a little bit. So I think that pretty much wraps Absol it up here. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you both very much for having me on the show. I had a great time. I think it's a great show and good luck to the both of you. Oh, thank, thank you, you Kimberly. Thanks and by so the much. way, I'm, I'm heading up there. My daughter goes to Duke University and I don't know if we'll have any time during our visit, but don't be surprised if I give you a jingle and, and, uh, and if I won that bet and people pay me a bunch of money, <laughs> I'll buy you lunch. But I have to say, if I may, Tina, Kimberly, you've been a wonderful, wonderful guest. Oh, and along you. with some other technical glitches, I forgot to give you... <laughs> okay. So, yes. Thank you so much for joining us. All right. Thank All right, you. See everyone later. All right. Oh, this have is a great Martin Luther King Day, everybody. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And y'all... You've been watching Legally Speaking. Thank you so much for joining us again. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.